The second generation Siri remote for Apple TV is riding in on its aluminum horse to save us from the subpar experience of its predecessor, and rightfully so. But it's not perfect and without its fair share of caveats, but that's what I'm here for. So just sit back, relax, kick up your feet, grab a cold one, and don't touch that dial. One tech mind. When the original Siri remote was announced, sure, we all oohed and awed at the fluidity of the combined laptop-like trackpad navigation and the iOS-type UI. It was a breath of fresh air and still is, compared to terrible smart TV interfaces and remotes with a plethora of Apple's dreaded arch nemesis buttons. And for a while, life was okay, until it was not. We simply put up with the remote because it did a decent enough job. But when has decent ever been acceptable to and of Apple? Eventually, the trackpad and mature UI was not enough to make up for staple functionality gaps Apple created that can only be solved by buttons. And this is not a headphone jack removal type scenario. Apple just outright omitted essential functionality with little recourse and cumbersome workarounds. To that end, and similar to Apple's reversal of the dreaded butterfly keyboard switches in their MacBook line, the second gen remote is another rare course correction on their part. Not only is the remote chonky by Apple standards, it has six more buttons than the last one, making for a grand total of 12. There's dedicated up, down, left and right directional buttons, as well as how did they not exist before power and mute. Oh, and the menu button is now called the back button because that's basically all it does anyway. Don't get me wrong, the chonkiness is very much welcome. The new remote feels like a premium product when compared to the almost toy-like fragility of the first. It has a nice heft with a convex aluminum back that's even colder to the touch than AirPods Max. The sharp edges make it slightly less comfortable in the hand than the first, but overall easier to hold, if that makes sense. It's very akin to the sharp edges on the iPhone, iPad, and now the iMac. And the directional buttons work exactly how you think they would, and they're okay. They feel much different than the other buttons that Apple makes with a pretty stiff click. And you know that edge gesture on the old remote, which allows you to skip back or ahead 10 seconds and works like 80% of the time, but makes you want to throw it at the wall the rest of the time? Well, now you can click the dedicated left and right directional buttons to do the same thing with 20% more reliability and 100% less frustration. The circular iPod wheel looking area at the top of the remote is called the click pad, which replaces the rectangular touchpad. It retains the same exact functionality so you can swipe through menus and content until your heart is content using the entirety of the circle, even the outer edges where the directional buttons are. And the center button works exactly the same as clicking the old trackpad, so no big change there. But the truly satisfying iPod callback, the one that makes me feel like I'm in high school again with my third generation iPod, that really dates me, doesn't it? Is the jog wheel gesture Apple has built into the outer edge of the circle. Instead of swiping forward or backward through your content, you can rotate through it with even greater precision to find the exact moment you're looking for. It works extremely well in practice and is one of those addicting gestures that seems so perfectly obvious in hindsight, just like pinch to zoom. The only thing I don't like about the gesture is how you engage it. You first have to pause your content, then rest your finger on the outer circle until the wheel icon appears under the playhead. Then you can jog along like it's 2003, but the whole process just feels a tad cumbersome. I think it would be an even better and speedier experience if you didn't have to pause first. So I really hope Apple will consider tweaking it in the future to allow us to do that. The Siri button has been relocated to the right side of the remote and is now a pill shape similar to the side button on iPhone, iPad, and Apple Watch. I'm fine with this change since I can use my thumb to press it pretty easily and it feels pretty comfortable, but if you're a lefty, you may not feel the same way. The dedicated power button is a welcome change for a couple reasons. First, you can just press and hold it to turn off your Apple TV and actual TV, and you no longer have to do that awkward dance when the Apple TV first boots up where you press the back or TV button to connect the remote, and then it actually processes the input of the button you pressed. That has always irrationally bugged the hell out of me, so I'm glad that's no longer the case with this new remote. And the mute button is both not at all special and marvelous at the same time. But before you rush out and buy this for your existing Apple TV, there are a couple more things you should know. Namely, there is no accelerometer or gyroscope in the new remote, despite it being even thicker than the last one. This means you cannot use it to play games that require motion control. 
I personally couldn't care less because the old Siri remote made for an absolutely awful gaming controller, and now with PS5 and Xbox controller support, you're much better off using one of those or a made for iPhone program remote that's certified to work with Apple's devices. Now you could say this goes against Apple's longtime practice of providing all the equipment you need to use your device in the box. <laughs> Phone power adapter. <clears throat> Excuse me. However, I think they realized they would much rather omit this subpar experience and let the real controller shine. And by far, my biggest complaint about the new remote is the fact that it does not include Find My Network support like AirTag, which would allow us to locate the device when we inevitably misplace it. And I do not buy Apple VP of product marketing Tim Twerdall when he told Mobile Syrup in an interview, Find My is not supported because the remote is quote, thicker so it won't fall in your couch cushions as much. All due respect to Mr. Twerdall, but he either does not have a young child like me who will lose things much larger than a remote literally all the time, or this is not the real reason. I'm inclined to think the latter. The real reason my guess is that it probably has to do with cost savings. Apple likely didn't want to embed a U1 proximity awareness chip and speaker in the remote, which would elevate its cost. However, I say who cares about the U1 chip? It's only good for precision finding when it comes to Find My, something I think we could go without for the remote. In my opinion, they could have at least put a speaker in it, made it $5 more expensive, so we could at least ping the darn thing. And maybe most people won't care if it doesn't have Find My support, but it's a move that will appear like a glaringly missed opportunity to those who do, because that's exactly what it is. But that's just me, so let me know in the comments if you think the remote should or should not have Find My support, or if you care or don't care about it. With all that said, the second gen Siri remote is mostly worth its $59 price tag for the privilege of buttons and a much better experience. I say mostly because I think a more reasonable price would be around $39, especially for those of us who would like to add the remote to our multiple Apple TV HD and previous gen 4K units since it works with those as well. So did you pick up the new Siri remote and or the Apple TV 4K? If so, let me know how it's working for you down in the comments below and if you have any other questions about the remote itself. I did not pick up the new Apple TV, but I've heard that it fixes a lot of the weird UI lag and bugs experienced with the last gen model, so I may just get one for the living room where we watch most of our TV. And if I do, I'll make sure to let you guys know how it goes. And if you like this video, please consider giving it the old thumbs up, subscribing to join the most obsessed community in tech, and ringing that bell so you don't miss anything else. And until next time, thanks for listening to my One Tech Mind.